Brother Samuel Abi, you don't drive. You've not driven before. You've not, you've not driven a car. Okay. So if I call him out, come. And say, in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you believe in grace. Do you believe grace work? If I say, in the name of Jesus, grace to drive. Receive. Drive. Drive. In Jesus' name. And I put the key of car in his hand. I said, that my car outside. Drive it to Elijah. Will he get to Elijah? But grace, does grace work? But how come this grace will not work? <laughs> but grace, is, is, grace can work. He, he, won't, he won't get to Elijah. He, he won't even move the car of that place. But yet, grace works. Is it not working? So you must understand that there are limitations. So that is the part I'm going to be sharing. Thank you. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. That's the two scripture that spoke more about this. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. Everybody, we are going to read it with a prophetic voice. That is a voice that you receive whenever you receive a credit alert, the way you shout. <laughs> At the count of two, one to go. That grace. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the word be with you. There are many things that can be with you. It doesn't matter what is with you. If these three things are not with you, the with you is not safe with you. <laughs> if I am with you, if your father is with you, if the president of Nigeria is with you, everything with you minus these three things, you are not safe. What makes a man complete? When you say, I am complete with, you, with me, three things must be captured in the reality of a man. To that man to say, I am complete. If these three things are not with you, you are not safe. Three things that must be with you. The Bible begins to describe, the Bible says, these are the three things that we must cry to God that it's more, we must desire to be with us. And when these three things are with you, it doesn't matter who is against you. Let the whole world be against you. When these three things are with you, please go on that journey. You will succeed. When these three things are with you, enter into any office, you will come out smiling. When these three things are with you, walk into any organization, they will, they will bow before you. The Bible describes these three things. Number one, the Bible says, the grace of our Lord Jesus. If I want to, if I was to, you know, I won't rewrite scripture, but if I was to rearrange it, I will start actually with the love of God. So if I want to rearrange this scripture, I will say the love of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus and the fellowship if I was to rearrange it. But, you know, everything written in scripture has its purpose. So the grace, the love, and the fellowship. So when you put Trinity together, Trinity, you know, with the Trinity, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you put Trinity together, he has explained that what the Father, the, the allocation of the Father, the allocation of the Father, is love that is what that is what we call the father's love no matter what you do father the father loves you the father operates on the principles of love the son is the allocation of the son is grace that's the what the son brings then the way to interact with the spirit is fellowship communion intimacy or what we call coninonia the way to interact with the father you interact the language of the father is the language of love the language of the son is the language of grace the language of the spirit is the language of fellowship intimacy can you lift your hands everybody repeat after me say the language of the father 
is the language of love. The language of the Son is the language of grace. The language of the Spirit is the fellowship, language of fellowship. No, but the theme here is we are discussing on the grace of our Lord. Now, before he became the Lord, before he became Jesus, you will see there's a something, there's a scripture there called Lord. The word Lord there means honor. The same we use for landlord. If this grace will work for you, you must understand that Jesus must be your Lord. Jesus can be many things, but if it's not your Lord, this grace will not work. Is there somebody following me? If this grace must work, you must recognize Jesus as your Lord. That's why we call him our Lord and Savior. He can be your Savior, but not your Lord. There are many who agree Jesus. Do you know many people confess Jesus? Have you not seen uh, Muslims? They tell you they believe in Jesus. You've not seen a Muslim who quote scriptures. He believes Jesus as a Savior. But that is, he believes Jesus as a Savior. But to now believe him as a Lord is a problem. And some believe him as a Lord, but to believe him as a Savior is a problem. So when you say confess with your mouth, confessing Jesus with your mouth alone does not bring salvation. That's why the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, number one, and believe with your heart. The word heart there has to do with conviction. That is the perception of your mentality. Your, your total belief changes to accept him as your Lord. Follow me. So you must be the Lord. But this grace of the Lord has many possibilities. This grace we want to discuss. Two things that the grace of our Lord brings. Number one, the grace of our Lord, write this down carries the embodiment of the fullness of God's head bodily. In the grace of our Lord is, is it carries the embodiment of the Godhead bodily. John 1 in verse 16. John 1 16 at the same time Ephesians Colossians chapter 2 in verse 9. Colossians 2 verse 9, in him dwelleth the fullness of all this. So all the powers, all that is in the Godhead, they invested it in one man called Jesus. So that when you see Jesus, it's a representation of the Father. It's Jesus that is the epic center between the Father and the Son. Jesus was the one who came to reveal the Father and it was Jesus that made available the Holy Ghost. Jesus came to reveal. Nobody has seen Jesus, but when he came, he revealed the Father. And when he was going, he said, I give you another comforter. Meaning he was, is the center between, is the connective connection between the Father and the, and the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus. So Jesus became the fullness of Godhead bodily. He, inside of Jesus is all the Godhead. If you are looking for the Father, you see it in Jesus. And if you are looking for the Spirit, you also see it in Jesus. That is why we accept Jesus into our life, not the Holy Ghost. That's why we accept Jesus to our life, not the Father. You don't say, you know, you don't say, I receive God into my life. God, God, be my God, be my, you are not, you receive Jesus. And the way to receive the Holy Ghost is to receive Jesus. Jesus is the fullness of Godhead bodily. Somebody following me. So, Grace is the fullness. So when you have grace, when you are saying grace, you are receiving the fullness of God's head bodily. Number two, this definition will bless your life of grace. That the grace, I'm talking about the one, the grace of our Lord Jesus. Grace can be, the grace of our Lord Jesus can be described as believer's spiritual advantage in life. There are many advantages that believers have. But the carrier of all advantage is grace. 
Why we believers, we don't bother ourselves about many things. Because we have many advantage. Our advantage is not in our face. Our advantage is not in our strength. Our advantage is not in our ability. Our advantage is not even in our brain. Our advantage is not in what we know, who we know. Our advantage is not the book we have read. Our advantage is in the spiritual um, blessing that God has made, which is called spiritual advantage. So, for instance, one of the advantages of believers we have recorded is the advantage of speed. It's the advantage of restoration. For instance, you can run ahead of me and something can come upon me called speed. And they that wait upon the Lord, he renew their strength. They will mount up. So why you are running, me I wait. And while I'm waiting, before you get to body God, me, something come upon me, I mount. I fly. It's an advantage in the spirit. So don't think because you have gone ahead of me, you will get there. You are wasting your time. I have an advantage. It's only we that don't know our advantage. We feel we are disadvantaged. That is why it doesn't matter who had gone ahead of me in life. Let your mate get married before you. Let your mate get job before you. If you can tap into the advantage of believers, you will surpass them. Like Elijah, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him and he had to run the chariot of, the, uh, of Ahab. Ahab was with a child, but a man who had an advantage called the hand of God. Like someone here in this service, by grace that will come upon you, an advantage will come upon you. And people that have gone ahead of you, you will overtake them in the name of Jesus. There is an advantage called mechanical advantage. You know, grace is like a spiritual jack. You, you have a jack in your car. I don't know if you know a jack. I, I don't know if I've seen a jack before. You know, you will see a mighty truck. They will tap 20, 50 men in this place. Carry a car. You can't carry it. 50 empty men. After eating hukobi, correct food, you can't carry the car. And then you will carry one small jack. Small, small jack. Small. And then you will bring, who is it? Come, Esther. The same car that 50 men cannot carry. And they will bring tiny Esther. And, we, and give tiny Esther a jack. And jack, they will tell you, put this jack at this place. You know, it must be at the right place, not just anywhere. There, there must be a connecting point, right? Imano, you understand? And this tiny Esther, the same car that 50 men cannot carry, Esther will just go there and just be, you just be sitting like this, and the car will be coming up by itself. Tire suspended in the air. Everything suspended. And you look at him and say, power for you! And Esther will say, yes, it's me. That thing that suspended that car, it's an advantage mechanically. That is to let you know that when a man carries grace, the little you can do great things. <laughs> Somebody say, little me. Little me. Because I have a spiritual advantage. No wonder when David stood before Goliath, the Bible said Goliath disdained him. I said, little boy, you people came to mock me the boy was a little boy holding a little string inside the little thing is a little stone everything was little but behind that little there is a God who is the God of grace and when G enters into grace race it becomes grace when you remove G God from grace life is reduced to race and you will see suddenly the car is lifted effortlessly it means when a man carries grace life will be effortlessly defeated because a man carries grace and look up people that carry the grace of our lord jesus they don't look like it you will see a person have you seen a mighty mighty building Powerful building, and you say, Who is the owner of this building? And say, This small boy, and you'll be looking like this one. It doesn't look like it. The purpose of grace is that grace wants grace wants to show it in such a way that the carrier of the grace will not look like it. When God begins to use a man or begin to bless a man, and he wants to the, this the agenda of God is to showcase the grace the man carries, not the strength of that man. So grace is, a, as you consider, it's a spiritual advantage. 
I want to share with you for the next few minutes five blessings that comes from the grace of our Lord Jesus. Five blessings that a man gets from the grace of our Lord Jesus. Or five benefits that is trapped in the grace of our Lord Jesus. Write this down. Number one is the blessings of salvation and that was shared in the first service the blessing of salvation the bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 he said by grace are you saved through faith not of yourself is a gift you know salvation is the illuminator of a destiny salvation is what brings us alive the bible says we were all dead in sin Everybody died by one man, Adam. We all died. Our spirit dead and our soul trapped. So at salvation, our spirit comes alive. That is why if you are not saved, you are not entitled to grace. What gives you an entitlement to grace is salvation. So salvation is the first entrance point into grace. So the number one blessing advantage or benefit of grace is salvation the second one second peter chapter 2 verse 1 this way i'm going to dwell a little advantage of grace second peter chapter 2 in verse 1 second peter chapter 2 second peter no 1 verse 2 second peter 1 verse 2 please look up everybody second peter 1 verse 2 the second advantage or what grace brings to us, the grace of our Lord Jesus. I want everybody to read this one, two, go. Grace. Aha, look up. Grace comes with another advantage to us believers called peace. Peace, the Bible says, can be multiplied. And grace can be multiplied. Peace can be in two forms. Number one, this peace can mean rest. This peace can mean a man getting to a state of his life whereby he handed it over to God. Peace doesn't mean the man sleeps. The man means, peace means the man can rest in God. When you see men who are graceful, they are men who are peaceful. You see, when a man carries the grace of our Lord Jesus, you no longer stress the stress of the world. Stress to heat, stress to heat, stress for this, stress for up and down. Some people, when you look at them, you know, a woman celebrated a birthday in my house yesterday. And my wife told me the night that the woman is just 45 years. I said, lie, lie. I said, this woman, it cannot be 45. I said, I can bet it, this woman must be 65. She said, no, because the woman bleached. She wanted it. I said, no, this woman is 65. It's not 45. Because the, if you see the woman, she can never be 45. She said she saw the banner, 45 years. I said, 45 years old woman, looking so stressful. When you see some people, they put all their, life prob all their problems of life on their head. How can a 25-year-old person be looking like a 45-year-old person? What are you putting on your head? What is your problem? What Jesus Christ brings is comes with peace. Peace means that you have handed over all your battles to God. How can Jesus is not sleeping? I am not sleeping. Somebody must be awake. If he is awake, I should sleep. He is awake, I'm awake. Two persons awake on top of what? When you see some who they spend all their life thinking, I'm thinking about every including problems of Nigeria, they are thinking about it. And you could you will see the whole stress on their face. Jesus had brought grace, and grace comes with peace. Someone say peace. Graceful people are peaceful people. Graceful people. When you see a person who say, I'm a war, I'm a fighter, I'm a this, I'm a that. Jesus brought peace, he didn't bring war. You are the one carrying war to everywhere. War, war, war. Everywhere is war. 
Let there be war. war. Let, we don't want war. We want peace. As a man, you meet a lady. Lady say, I'm going to give you the fight of your life. Better run for your life. Because as a guy, you have been fighting since you were born. Now a lady is coming to give you fight. I don't want fight. I want peace. Someone say peace. Grace brought peace. Now, listen. There are three types of peace that everybody must have. I want to dwell on this. Number one peace is called peace with God. That's a spiritual peace. Please, I beg you, don't go to bed every night knowing well that you, God is not happy with you. Don't go to bed. It's dangerous. No, don't, don't sleep at night. You sleep. It is dangerous to sleep in the night knowing well that you and God, you have matters to settle. You have offended him and you go and sleep. You can sleep. You shouldn't be able to sleep. You should also settle matter with God. Every time you hear, you disobey, you sin against him. You have done something bad and you could sleep comfortably. You are not afraid. That something can come and press you down. That you can settle. Be at peace. The first peace everyone must have is peace with God. I have peace with God. That's spiritual peace. Peace with God guarantees all other peace. When you have first have peace with God, then all other peace are connected. The first peace is called peace with God. Peace with God is the peace of salvation that you are saved. Forget about the billionaires. Forget about those who are rich in millions. If they don't have peace with God, their money is useless. That you are saved means that you have peace with your God. It means if God calls you home, Tonight, you are returning back and your soul will have rest. A man can have billions of nera on earth. And if he's not saved, that soul, will, he, he may enjoy on earth. But that soul is going to a permanent damnation, suffering, eternal suffering. Peace with God. The second peace we must have is peace with others. Someone say peace with others. Peace with others is peace that is called relational peace. Peace with your friends, peace with your families. Uh, Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 4, I think in verse 6, when the Bible says, Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. Hebrew, yeah, Hebrew 12, verse 14. Hebrew 12, verse 14. Hebrew 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. Pastor, I cannot be everybody's friend. We are not, the Bible did not say make friends with all men, but say follow peace with all men meaning that you can be at peace with everybody now you are the one fighting everybody at your office you fought everybody in your house you fought everybody in church you are fighting everybody and you will come back and say people don't like me i don't know why people like me i don't know people don't like me hey, people don't like me. the question is are you at peace with everybody some people listen some people Put them in the midst of angels. They will see have they will see brief people, and they will see make money. They will be keeping malice with angels. Angels, angels. They'll be, they'll be fighting angels. I will not greet Angel Gabriel because Angel Gabriel did not greet me in the morning. Somebody say peace. You know, my wife always say, do this for the sake of peace, and for the sake of peace of mind. Why should you go to bed, your you and your brother? You are not at peace and you are sleeping comfortably. You should not. As a believer, we should be able to ensure that no matter how hard the thing may be, ensure that before you go to bed that day, make peace. Tell somebody, make peace. Make peace. There are some of us, our problems is not demon. Our problem is not the devils of our father's house. Some of the matter, hey, oh, go on, yeah. oh, go on, yeah. it's not oh, go on, yeah. They should go and say sorry to their boss. They should go and say sorry to somebody they offended. Say sorry to somebody. It's all about making peace. You know, one, one, of, uh, one of us, I was not happy with the person for some time. I've not public for years. I've not spoken to the person. And the person celebrated birthday a few days ago. And my wife spoke to the person. And then I entered the room. She said, this person is celebrating birthday. He said, talk to the person. I said, no, I'm not talking to the person. She said, ma, 
for the sake of peace of mind. And honestly, I took the phone. It took me a lot of energy to say, how are you? I called somebody one time. I said, will you do 21 days dry fast? Or you will tell this person, your, your boss, I am sorry. He said, Pastor, I choose 21 days dry fast. He said, I would rather do 21. You see, that thing is, is, a, is, a, is a kingdom in a person. That you would rather decide to stab yourself or food for 21 days than to tell another person. I, he said, if you know what my boss did for me, if you know my boss, my boss, my boss, that he hurt me, that he pain me, he's burning me, he's burning me. I said, but you choose to do 21. He said, I will do that one. 21 days fast. That is the degree to which, how hard it is. You think it's easy to make peace. You think it's easy. It's easy to do 10 hours fasting and prayer than to make peace with somebody. Especially if you know you are the one that you are not at fault. And the thing the devil says, you know, I'm not at fault. I'm not at fault. I'm, especially if you are not at fault. Then you will now stand on that right. I'm not at fault. This person offended me. I'm not at fault. Why should I make peace? Why should I make peace? I would rather fast and pray. That prayer and fasting is actually in vain. It is not going to be answered. Now listen. If you and a person have fight. And you are the one that is not at fault. And the person is older than you. In the physical. Or even in spiritual. Or is your boss. If you make attempt to make peace. In the realm of the spirit. You are more mature than the person. Let me tell you why. It is who, whoever made attempt to make peace, the Bible sees the person as spiritually matured. So the two of us had fights, and I offended you. And you come and tell me, Pastor, I'm sorry. And I'm telling you, I'm only a pastor by my standing here. In the height of God, you are bigger than me. When we start ranking among God, if two of us stand before God, they will choose you more than they chose me. You know why? The way they, they the, the, the way the spirit um, group us, they group us on the niche, on the way and the way by which your heart had been worked upon. How your heart had been broken. So you see, peace with friends or peace with people, it can be the hardest thing ever. So you know, she told me and told me, call this person. And she gave me the phone. And I said, you know, there's that voice. That defeated voice. Hello. You now pause. Even the person knew. How are you? I just want to tell you happy birthday to you. It did enter my heart. I just say happy birthday to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And God, and I wanted to hand it. The spirit of God said, tell him you love him. I said, this is a lie. I did not love him. <laughs> tell him you love him. How can I tell you I love you when I don't love you? It's a lie. God said, tell him you love him. And I, I said, I love you. And immediately I said that, a major body left my heart. I, I, I saw a major stone, like something holding my heart. Just immediately I said, left my heart. And I found myself, I became light. I became free. I said, what's going on? And God said, for this you have done, a major breakthrough will come your way. Somebody say, peace with people. There are some of us here, our problem in life, our delay, our battles, our challenges, is not in any territorial being. It's in the ability to make peace. Now, this don't get me right. I'm not saying, go and make friends. The Bible did not say, make friends with all. I would say make peace with all. If, if there's anybody anywhere now who told you, I don't like pastor, pastor offended me, pastor did this to me, pastor did that to me. See, the way God is working on my heart, just give me the person's phone number. I'll be the one to go, hello, I heard you said you are not happy with me. I heard you said this. Please, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, whatever I've done, let it go. Because see, I have come to discover in life the greatest regret of a man is that the man died and then he never made peace. Do 
you know how many are in the grave? And the conscience is judging them because there was someone they're supposed to make peace with. They never made peace with that person. And the conscience is like a policeman. He will stand before them, before God. And say, you were supposed to make peace with your brother, your friend, your father, your pastor, your this, your dad. You were supposed to, but you never made peace. That alone can become a barrier to entering the gate of heaven. This thing I'm saying now, somebody in his, in his mind here, he's saying, if this is to go to hell, let me go. I'm dead, as I'm talking, if somebody here is saying, Pastor, if that is hell, don't threaten us with hell. I will go to hell fire. You see that thing? Is a kingdom. Someone say peace. Peace with others is called relational peace. My prayer for you today is that everyone here will begin to learn to make peace. The third peace is called peace with self. Someone say peace with self. Peace with self is called emotional peace. This peace is the kind of a peace whereby once a while, Miss Edikina Tebi, pat yourself at the back and say, you are doing well. Oh yeah, everybody, pat yourself at the back. Do you know we can live in a world whereby you see success of others and you will feel like you are nothing. Especially those of you who are Instagram people, you see your friend, you see, you see this one, he's in a house, he's married, and you see all that he you cannot buy. Then one thought is ministering to you and say, you, you, are, you, you are a failure, and you say you are serving Jesus. You, now, you wake up in the morning, you start fighting everybody in the house. Once in a while, please pat yourself at the back and say, you are doing well. Peace with self. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Don't be too hard. You know, the other day, Emma doesn't know what happened. I was, I was reading. I was at home reading around 12 o'clock. I tried to read. Every time I tried to read, the book did not enter. I carry an iPad. As I'm putting it in my head, it's going through this way. So on the chair, I'll be dozing. In the afternoon, on the chair, I'll be dozing. Ah, what happened? So one spirit said, you are tired. Go and sleep. Another spirit said, Papa, the way cannot be sleeping now. Look up. Another spirit said, You see, you have read, read. You are tired. Go and sleep. Another voice said, Bishop, they could do four hours. He doesn't sleep. Another voice said, Hey, you are tired. I said, Look at that. Another voice now said, Look at the time. It's 12 o'clock. Can Dr. Luca be sleeping at this time? Another voice said, You are tired. Tired. See, I just packed my book, packed my iPad. I, I navigated the room. I said, they must shift. Shift. I just lie flat. I'm talking about afternoon. 12. I just lie flat. Emma said, What happened? I said, I don't know what happened, but let me just sleep. And as I lie down on the bed, in less than one minute, I dove off. I slept off. I think I slept for like one hour, 30 minutes. God now woke me back again. Immediately I woke up. Somebody say five alive. My body was active. Everywhere was, I was active. And I went back to the book. I went back to the iPad. Quick, quick, what I, I've been struggling for since 10 a.m. Started entering my brain. I was able to pick it quick. I was able to, this is how some people do, do and they die. You, you become too harsh on yourself. You know, the other day, my wife said, Ma, let's go and sit down and watch a movie. You have been walking, walking. There's a brother in our ministry that you will hear what I'm saying. When you pay him salary, now, and you ask him 30 minutes after that salary, you will say he doesn't have money. You know, put the money in his hand now. One minute, come back, he will say, I don't get it. So what happened? He said, his sister is somewhere, so he's sending his salary to his sister. The sister you are sending salary is eating chicken and chips. You, you are drinking Gary. He's eating. You are drinking Gary. You are you're not eating. So he doesn't have money because he's giving money to people. Once a while, when they pay you, remove a bulk of that salary. Go to correct Italy. Sit down. Order for 12 wraps of pounded yam. Correct it. Someone say it. It's not your, it's your money. Enjoy. This thing I'm saying is part of grace. 
Uh, you think grace is a is part of grace? Eat. Sit down. Relax. Sit down. Watch movie. Sit and wine. Men, play with your children. Play with your wife. Life is not too hard. Life, you, you are the one that dig everything is out your face. You frown, you frown your face, you frown everything, everywhere. Nobody can play with you, nobody can talk to you. You leave church, you are like, you, you are the one making life hard. When you are gone, everybody will forget you. Somebody who is hearing me, sisters, peace with yourself. Many reasons why many are having emotional stress. I'm, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. Stress. You will not carry your stress. Guys, don't marry a lady that is always complaining of stress, stress, emotional stress. Don't marry her. She will carry that stress and use it to rub on you. Why? Because the, you should be able to find a way at the point, even in the midst of the stress, find a way to ease that stress. Peace with self. Someone said, peace with self. So number one, peace with God. Two, peace with others. Three, peace with self. Now, number three blessings. I'll round up. Soon round up now. I will talk about, and then I just talk about one way to which you can receive grace. Number three way, one of three things. I can't talk about the five. Number three thing grace brings. Number three, grace comes with beauty. Someone say beauty. Our beauty is not in our makeup. Our beauty is in the glory of the Lord that comes upon you. Sin is ugly. Sin is what? Is how can you 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 carry in their hand? You are drinking. Smoke is coming from your ear, from your nose, from your mouth, from your armpit, from every part of your body. It's, oh, oh, I enjoy life. You can't you see how ugly you are? Ugly you are. You are ugly. Grace comes with beauty. It's called the beauty of the Lord. Revelation in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 9, the Bible says, ornament of grace shall it be upon you. When you see graceful people, graceful people are beautiful people. When you see, that is why you see most times people say, why is it that Jesus will have fine? Jesus will have handsome people. Why? Because we are gracious. The most beautiful people on earth are the Jesus people. Come to PIC, you see a lot of beautiful faces. Why? Because Jesus is our beauty. What makes us beautiful? It's not the cream that we rub. It's not the Mary Kay. And all the makeups. Even though we use it too. What makes us beautiful? It's the glory of the Lord. That is upon our life. How many of you want to carry that glory? You carry in the name of Jesus Christ. Beauty of the Lord. Now quickly one way to receive grace. Just one. I'll talk about one. One a way to receive grace. James chapter 4 in verse 6. James chapter 4 in verse 6. There are many channels to grace. Many ways by which a man can receive grace. But I'll just talk about one because of time. Are you there? Everybody, let's read with a prophetic voice at the count of two. One, two, go. No, no, no. Let's read it again. One, two, go. Grace looks for where humility resides. Everywhere there's humility, grace is always, grace will be searching for humility. What is humility? Number one, humility is acknowledgement of your insufficiency for you to connect to the sufficiency of God. You know, sometimes most of you think when pastor is coming to the altar, I, I have loaded myself. Every time you see me sitting there, I say, Lord, I'm empty. I don't know what to say. Please, I don't know what to say. I don't know why. Our, our sufficiency is of God. Let me tell you something. Till I stand on that altar, most times, I don't know what to say. In fact, there are times I've stand up to go on the altar and I forget everything. So if you think, Pastor, is a guru. It's a preaching machine. No, sir. Why? Grace looks for men who are insufficient. Why is it that God uses the weak things? When you see somebody who says, I can do it. I am big enough. He will not use you. 
That is why those who say, I don't want to marry pastor. Ask every, why is that every lady who say, I don't want to marry pastor, end up marrying pastor? Because in that statement, God is looking for. He's looking for that void. So if you say, I will not marry pastor, you are already been qualified to marry pastor. I, I cannot be, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. You see, that statement is called humility. God is looking for insufficiency. He's looking for men who are humble. Men who are humble and not to admit they can't so that God can. When you, if you are sufficient in yourself, you do not need God. If you think you can do it, then you do. God cannot do it. When you think you cannot, then God can. Apostle Paul said, I can do all things. But if you think it's me, <laughs> it's not, he said, there is somebody who strengthens me. His name is called Christ. Who is following me now? Humility. Someone say humility. The Bible says, First Peter chapter 5 verse 5, First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. Yeah. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5, First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. He gave grace to the humble. Anywhere God sees humility, God will pour his grace upon that place. Everybody, let's read together. You like a younger, submit yourself to the enter as you are be subject to one another. Be clothed with humility. For God resists and give grace to the humble. Verse 6 says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt. God resists. You know what word resists means? God fights anywhere he sees pride. He will fight the person. What is humility? Ability to be teachable, correctable, and instructable. There are many pastors who are not teachable. You know why many errors, we are many error pastors who are doing many errors. When you have a pastor that if you go into error and there's nobody to report that pastor to, is a problem. When you have a person who you cannot report, to, if I tell you, TG Jakes is my pastor, can you reach TG Jakes? Can you call him? Do you have his phone number? You don't. But when you see a person, you should be able to know if he goes into error, who do I call to correct him? Listen, ladies, if you see a guy who changes spiritual father like he changes clothes, that guy will change you in less than one year to another lady. A, a guy who changes, today is this one, tomorrow is apostle to this, next one is apostle to that, upper day is apostle. The guy can, he doesn't have a one single father. He's changing father up and down. And you say, he is my husband. You will see in less than one year, he will change you. Because the same nature that make him change father up and down is the same nature that will make you change you as a wife. When you have a man, a man that you cannot, that cannot be corrected. They cannot be strict, cannot be strict. Do you know people in this church, there are people in a ministry, their leader cannot correct them. Say, who are you to correct me? Is it because I'm in choir? Who are you, Pastor Dave, don't correct me? If two of us are to stand side by side, can you stand me? Do you know there are people in the choir that say that? Not this choir. Not this choir. No, not this choir. Maybe the other choir. Women leader. Who are you, women leader? Is it because uh, is there so they will not quote something, something that brought something and something together? In church of God. A woman leader cannot say, woman leader, who are you to correct me? Woman leader, who are you to correct me? Yeah, it's because what's of make who make the chick himself our leader? In a church, in a church, you can't be corrected. You can't be instructed. And you cannot be teachable. No teachable, no teachability. You are not humble if you cannot be taught. You can't sit and let them teach you. So humility is shown in ability to be teachable, to be instructable, and to be correctable. Correction. My wife corrects me. She do correct me. Emma, you are wrong here. I say, oh, it's true. It's true. It's true. And I say, hey, why are you to correct me? I am the man. You are the woman. Shut, shut, me shunu. <laughs> shut up your mouth. I am the man who told you that you are always correct all the time. You are not all correct all the time. You can be corrected. Tell someone you can be corrected. I can be corrected. The day you feel you are not correctable, then you cannot be 
given grace. Because God is looking for people that if you give you that grace, the day you didn't do it well, God can correct you. He can use men to say, they can spank you. I say, you didn't see what you preach. You didn't preach well. He say, ah, God, I'm sorry. Let me go back and correct my error. You can call, edit your theology, right? You can edit it. Like we ministers, what gives, give us ability to teach is not the fact that we know theology or we know scriptures. It's grace in our lips. Somebody say grace. There are people who can teach far more than us, but yet nobody will listen to them. I mean, somebody will be teaching, teaching, and you, you, you don't be sleeping. And the person is teaching revelation, you'll be sleeping. That's to let you know something is wrong. There's grace lacking, or there's pride in the voice. So, pastors, our prayers, Lord, and grace my lips. Choir, your prayer is what? I mean, say somebody will sing, and the person, only the person is dancing. Everybody will say, a holy lane call. Like, what's this one singing? This one is just shouting, just making noise. And another person will come there and say, Oh, and all of us will just be crying. The problem is that the leaves is engraced. Marketer, where are the marketers here? Marketers. When a man, a person's leaves is engraced, you will poo poo in a paper and people will queue to buy it. <laughs> you don't understand? You will poo poo in paper. Okay. People will buy. You know why? To sell a product. Apart from techniques, you need grace to sell. To sell anything. Marketers, digital marketers, online marketers. There is a, have you seen people who can market anything? They can sell anything before you know you bought it. You even bought it before you are asking, wait till I buy. You wait till I buy. When they saw one wristwatch for $50,000 and somebody went to put the entire savings, he had been saving for 10 years to buy this one. When they bought it, I said, why did I buy it? What happened was that grace happened. <laughs> Amen. My prayer is that God will engrace your lips. Pastors, God will engrace our lips. Marketers, business people, God will engrace your lips. And God will make us humble. We will become teachable, instructable. We will become correctable. You need leaders, you need members, they can correct you. Your leader corrects you and you listen. Yes, sir. I listen, sir. Okay, sir. This is fine, sir. Okay, sir. Let me finally. Nobody wants to do business with a proud man. Everybody wants to do business with an humble person. The moment people sense pride in you, they start avoiding you. I'm telling you. And the question is, why are you even proud? What do you have? You don't, you are, you don't have anything and you are proud. Somebody, I'm rounding up now. Thank you. Somebody, you know, stole me sometime. One woman, he said, Pastor, I am your mother. I said, if, if it is that will open door for me, you are my mother. <laughs> you are my mother. Oh. You say, I am your mother. I said, You are my mother. Because the truth is, if that is what will open door, you better be my mother. But you are the one who says, You are my mother, you are my mother. Me, I do not agree. But if that is what will open my door, Oh, yeah, be my mother. But for after I've run, the mother is between you and you. <laughs> it's you and you. It's not you and me. Praise the Lord. Say, who are you? Tell me my mother. You cannot be my mother. See, you better be my mother. Eh? Emma, be my... She be that. Somebody say, grace. May God give us grace to be humble. Grace to be humble. You'll be teachable. You'll be correctable and be instructable. I say you will be teachable, you'll be instructable, and you'll be... Um, Pastor, Pastor Debbie, there are ladies who are crying to God that God should give them secret of nations and God, God bypass them and will come to another person who is sitting humbly at the corner of a room and God will give the person secret of a nation. What's the difference? One has humility. God knows if I keep this one secret, she can teach, she can keep that secret and continue to edit it even whenever I correct. But the other one is crying out of pride. Majority of the 10 hours, 20 hours, I love those prayers. But some of those prayers, we pray them and came out of that prayer without anything to show. You know why? The purpose of it is to say, I pray 10 hours. Hallelujah. 10 hours. 
10 hours. Did you pray 10 hours? Huh? 10 hours. 10 hours. The question is from your 10 hours, what revelation came out of it? And yet another person will just say, Father, you know I'm Lord, I don't do anything. Please help me. And God said, I look this for this hour. I'm not saying you should become weak in prayer. But even in your 10 hours, when you come out of it, say, I have not prayed. Your grace is sufficient. Rise upon your feet. Lift your hands to heaven. For one minute, can you acknowledge your insufficiency? Father, in you, I am insufficient. In myself, I am insufficient. But in you, I am sufficient. Lift your hands to heaven. Say, Father, I am weak. I can't do it. I can't help myself. I am battling this addiction. I can't come out. I need your help. I need help. My business is dying. Nothing is working. I can't. I've done all I can. I need the grace that carried Jesus. I need that grace to work for me. Are you ready? Lift your hands and pray one minute quickly. One minute pray. One minute. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, one before we go, I want you to pray for these three peace. Number one, peace with God. So if you are here this morning and you know you don't have peace with God, I want you to make that peace before you leave. By submitting your life to Jesus. Two, if you know you are here, you have someone somewhere, you don't have peace with that person. It could be a friend, could be a brother, could be a father, could be someone that you and you know you and this guy or person, you are falling out after service. God died enough strength and courage to make peace with that person. You will come back to thank me. And you will give testimony next week Sunday. You say, you always say, Pastor, give an instruction, I obey, and this is what happened. And thirdly, you also make peace with yourself by telling yourself, pat yourself at the back and tell yourself you have done well. Even though there is more to go. Quickly, there are people here, you want to make peace with God. Close your eyes. Pastor, can you pray for me to make peace with God this morning? Pray for me. Pastor, help me. Anybody, close your eyes. You can lift up your hands to heaven. You want to say, Pastor, pray for me to make peace with God. Anybody, lift up your hands as I pray for you. God bless those hands. All eyes closed. You want to make peace with God. Honestly, this is between you and God. I'm not supposed to bring you out and I'm not going to bring you out. But I just want to assist you. I just want to identify you and you also identify yourself. Those making peace with God, put your hand on your chest and say after me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that I am not at peace with you. But because of the sermon I've had, I come into peace with you. Father, I surrender my life to you. And I receive you into my life. Today, I make peace with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. If you said that prayer with me before you leave church, send your name and phone number to me, and I will continue to pray with you more. And the second one is peace with others. So if there's anybody here, quickly, Pastor, there is someone, there are people I need to settle with. Pastor, please help me. It can be hard, it's very difficult. This person did this to me and is very hard. Unforgiving. I have made up my mind till I die. I will not forgive this person. Pastor, it will only take God to appear before me. You are here. I can assist you. Close your eyes anywhere you are. Such person, just lift up your hand as I pray. Just anybody like that, just lift up. Be honest, honestly. You know it's between God. And if you are someone and you don't, I want to help you. I want to pray for grace. So that you can, you and such person... God can give you grace. I want to pray for you so that God can give you grace to go and make peace with that person. Are you ready? Lift up that hand very well. Father, I pray for those who have lifted up their hands. That grace that will help them make peace, let that grace rest upon them. Give them that heart. It will be difficult. It's hard to forgive. It's hard to forget. It's hard to make peace, but give them that grace. Supply grace supply grace including those who didn't lift up their hands but they know they need to make peace supply grace supply grace in Jesus name we pray finally put on your hand you know you have been hard on yourself I've been hard but now I want grace so that I can you know make peace with myself lift up your hands everybody anybody lift up your hands all right can you put your hand on your head father i pray for grace for those people that they will be able to make peace with themselves peace within that they will come out from emotional stress they will come out from that stress that ties them that thing that makes them hard on themselves 
That in telling them they are failure. That in telling them they cannot do enough. That in telling them that they can't succeed. That in telling them that they are not. They should do more than they are doing so that they can. They think and catch them. That in catching their emotion. Father, has for that grace. Let it rest upon them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, for this last one, I've said, it is not a license to laziness. Don't say because Pastor prayed, he went to sleep twelve o'clock. You are sleeping twelve o'clock. That thing only happened once. It's not all the time. So it just once or once in a while. So you cannot be sleeping every 12 o'clock. Say, my pastor slept 12. Yo, you are sleeping. Poverty will look for you. Amen. Wave your hands to Jesus. Let's give our offerings quickly. Tight, right? Let's give tight. Let's be seated. Let's give our tight. Hallelujah. Let's give our tight. If you have your tight, please come out. Let's pray for you. Titus. Titus.